Hey kids, how's everybody out there in UDTube land today, huh? <clears throat> well, me and Miss Lily are having dinner this evening, and today I made uh, shake and bake pork chops, which is just pork chops with breadcrumbs on them. And I made some uh, Brussels sprouts, which I just uh, fried them in a little bit of bacon grease. And um, I, I made a baked potato, one, one small baked potato. So that's what we're going to have for dinner. Hope you'll enjoy. Mmm. Mmm. -mm -mm. Brussels sprouts are, you know, they're a little cabbagey, I guess for lack of a better term, when you first get them, but <clears throat> when you fry them or, or grill them, grilling would have been better, but frying them certainly works. It brings up the sweetness in them that you're, you're always surprised to find, so. Very good. Miss Lily, go lay down. Go on, go lay down. She's a huffing and puffing and walking back and forth here. Every time I start a live stream, all of a sudden, she gets very excited, so. <clears throat> and right now, she's huffing and puffing, and we don't need that in the soundtrack, do we? Go on, go lay down. Get on. Go on. Good girl. Hmm. Now, kennel. She's laying right at the door, so we can still hear the huffing and puffing. Sorry. She's a good girl. She's a good girl, but she could be in her crate right now. Anyhow, <clears throat> um, shopping here in Ohio during the COVID season, especially with me being in such bad shape, I am um, not going to the grocery store and doing my grocery shopping. I am ordering and having them deliver. And I ordered a couple uh, pork chops, bone-in pork chops, and I thought they'd be the usual, you know, half-inch thin, thin pork chops. Instead, they're these great big thick ones. And so how do you cook them to get a good cook all the way down through it without um, either burning it or... Uh, they're hard to cook. They're hard to cook when they're that thick. you got to go really slow at a low temperature. So the only way I could do them was really bake them uh, at 350. So I baked them at 350 for an hour. And they came out perfect. They're, I, I cut them open, and it's got a really nice color inside. Hmm. See? It's cooked all the way through, but it's still... It's still moist and delicious. Not all dried out. Sometimes they dry out. Now, normally on my Brussels sprouts, I cut them in half, but... I have to admit, I was a little lazy. Lily, go kennel. Go on, kennel. You know what? I'm going to resolve this real quick here. You just close the door and I'll take care of that problem. I'm sorry about my noisy chair. I cannot believe how noisy this chair has gotten. Unbelievable. Really good. So today, oh my gosh, I watched my Buckeyes, my Ohio State Buckeyes, they lost. Very disappointed. Very, very disappointed in them. But, you know, I have to admit, in previous years, it's been kind of, it, it's gotten kind of boring because all they did was win. They win, 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 win. They play a game and they win. And that, that also gets kind of old. So the fact that they lost today actually piqued more interest in me to, to want to see if they can now pull out of this kind of slump that they're in. I don't know. Time will tell. No, right. I'm trying to eat up a lot of Brussels sprouts because they're kind of in my way. taking up a lot of space on my plate. 
So I'd like to get them out of the way. So I have some room to work. In retrospect, I probably should not have made the baked potato. But I just felt it was a good idea to have a second vegetable in here. Pork. Mmm. Mm-hmm. 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 You know, they have just ruined pork in America. They really have. If you've ever raised your own pigs and, and butchered your own pigs, you'll know what I'm talking about. They've tried to promote pork as the other white meat. See, it's white like chicken. Pork's not supposed to be white. Pork's supposed to be pink. Not red like beef, but pink. Somewhere in between chicken and beef. And instead, in their marketing, they, they feed it wheat. They feed it wheat to make it white. And um, they grind up wheat and feed that to the pigs. And so you end up with this very white-colored meat that's supposed to be being advertised as being healthier for you, but I'm not buying it. It's, it's pork that's fed wheat. It's still good tasting, but not nearly as good tasting as when I would raise the, the pigs myself. I'll, if I can edit in this, I'll stick a picture or check my Facebook. There you go. Check my Facebook. Check my pictures on my Carl Brook Facebook page. Go back a while and you'll see pictures of me with my pigs that I raise. I used to do 50 or 60 of them a year for folks. And uh, we were feeding them mostly barley. Uh, interesting that we would get the, <laughs> always trying to be frugal and, and make a buck, you know. And, and also in the interest of conservation and not wasting things, I contracted a local brewery up in Alaska, which is where I was while I was raising pigs, most recently. And I also did the same thing in Montana, but not on the same scale like I did when I was up in Alaska. I, I, I contacted the Talkeetna Brewing Company, uh, which was only about um, three, six, nine, ten miles from from my 80-acre farm that I had up there. And they were brewing lots of beer. Their beer business took off. They were being very successful. And as a result, they ended up with a lot of spent barley because they would use barley, obviously, for making beer. So they would buy bags, 50 pound bags, 100 pound bags of barley, and they would put it through the brewing process. And then at the end, they had copious amounts of spent brewer's grain um, that really made exceptional, exceptional pig food. It was really good. And so I would go over and I would pick up five, six, seven ton at a time from them. They would put them in these four foot by four foot by three foot deep totes. And I would go over and I would pick up eight, eight or nine totes at a time on my trailer, bring them home. I had to have a tractor with a front end load. I had to have a substantial tractor with a front end loader to pick up the weight, but I would pick up a tote, take it over and dump it in my pig pen. And 50, 60 pigs would come running over and they would be eating that barley, see? But it made the pork this beautiful reddish pink, almost a dark pink, almost beef-like, but not quite. Uh, but the flavor was, my God, it was just exceptional. Exceptional. I had people that would bought pigs from me and called back and said, hey, you know, we, we, want, we want to get a pig from you from now on <laughs> forever. You know, and of course, when we sold the farm up there, of course, we got a lot of disappointed people, but it's life. Mm. Now, here in Ohio, I find it very difficult to buy barley. None of the feed stores carry any in stock. 
they don't have any barley as feed. Um, I don't know of any farmers locally that's raising barley, uh, which I find interesting because, you know, Anheuser-Busch is a major brewery in Columbus, Ohio, but I don't see anybody here growing brewery. And maybe they are growing barley, but Bush is buying 100% of what they can grow. Maybe that's the case. Well, wouldn't surprise me, but none for sale in the markets. Mm -mm -mm. On the very end cap of the pork, right on this very edge here, on these particular pork shops anyway, there's a really tiny, thin little sliver of, of pork fat on the ed outside edge. Not nearly what there should be. It should be a lot more. But man, when that crisps up, it gets so flavorful. That, that's where the flavor's all coming from, is that little area. Mmm. These pork chops are odd because they've got the whole beef, pork, <clears throat> the main chop part, and then they've got their tails still on them. And they don't usually sell them with the tails on. They usually trim those off. So I found that interesting. Yeah, see, that's a little bit darker color. See that? This is on the tail. This is the part that normally would be trimmed off of the pork chop. So you'd never see that. And frankly, that's where the flavor is. In that darker meat. Cheers. My oldest son, Carl, introduced me to this Yingling beer. Never had it before. Yingling lager. Not bad. Not bad. I prefer, you know, the European brews, the, the Heineken and, and the, the Bex and Stella and, well, not Stella, um, was it, um, Stella's from Texas. Um, anyhow, the, you know, the German, the German beers. Um, but <clears throat> I find the Yingling to be pretty hopsy, a lot of hops in it, but not bad, not bad, good beer. Price point's right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. Now, for those of you who aren't following my channel, I'm actually in the process of, to, of, of losing weight. I was 527 pounds. I kid you not, 527 pounds. I'm down to 506 now. Now, I was 506 last week. And this week, I didn't lose any. And I'm, I'm sort of bothered by that. Of course, this is a big meal for, for me this week. This is the biggest meal I've eaten this entire week. Uh, I probably won't eat both pork shops. I'll probably just eat one. Um, but... People in the chat were commenting that I wasn't feeling good. And I wasn't feeling good probably because my blood sugar was triggered. And my blood sugar was triggered because I wasn't eating sufficiently. And um, if I ate a little more, I would lose weight faster, which of course doesn't really make sense. But I did read in another area where they were talking about the same thing, that you actually have to eat enough calories for your digestive system to work to lose the weight. If you eat too little, your system kind of shuts down a little bit, and that's what it was doing, and that's what was making me feel poorly. I was having digestive issues and stuff. So so I picked up the and ate a bit more, started cooking a bit more volume, needing a bit more volume, trying to make up for that, and um, I didn't lose weight. In fact, I, 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 I didn't really put on more weight, but I didn't lose any weight, and I was really disappointed by that. So, um, once again, what's the answer? I don't know. 
I don't know. We, we do the best we can with what we've got at hand, and we try and try and try and try until we can, um, until we can figure it out. So. Everybody and his brother right now has good advice. Do this and do that and do this and do that. And I got to do what's right for me. I'm a firm advocate that the right way for me is to simply eat less and move more. Enjoy whatever it is that I like and, and eat what I want to eat. But instead of having a three egg omelet, have a two egg omelet. Instead of having four pieces of bacon, have two pieces of bacon. <clears throat> it's not rocket science. It's really simple. Simply eat less and move more, and I'll, I'll lose weight. So, And that's what I was doing, and I was having great success with it. I went from 527 down to 506. So, you know, I lost 21 pounds in a seven-week period. That's not stellar, but that's not bad. You know, that's not bad. I mean, help! If I lose if I lose two pounds a week, I'm down a hundred pounds at the end of a year, right? So I've been trying to lose four pounds a week. Maybe pushing too hard. I don't know. Maybe maybe trying to do too much too quickly. But I'm highly motivated, and uh, you know, I'd really like to to get the show on the road. I will tell you that I feel tremendous having lost what weight I have lost. I just feel tremendous. I, I'm amazed at the difference it's made in in my energy level. Waking up in the morning, getting up out of bed for the first time, you know, my bones aren't creaking like they were. <laughs> I didn't, you know, feel exhausted. Of course, I'm still exhausted because I'm still carrying way too much weight. I am, <clears throat> I am more than 250 pounds overweight. So think about a 50-pound bag of dog food. Go, go, go to the grocery store and pick. If you can find a 50-pound. You can't even find a 50-pound bag of dog food hardly anymore. 40-pound bags. 20-pound bags. Go to a feed store and find a 50-pound bag of chicken feed. And put five of them on your back. And that's what I deal with every, every movement I make. Every time I stand up, that's five 50-pound bags of chicken feed I'm lifting with me while I get up. Man, that just boggles my mind. It was more than that. Okay, I'm down 21 pounds. Uh, 21 pounds isn't huge, but, you know, that's more than a bowling ball. And a bowling ball is heavy. So, that's some progress, you know. Some progress. Hmm. Now, some people say... Don't eat fat to lose weight. Some people say do eat fat to lose weight. Some people say don't eat have any carbs. Other people say have a balanced have a balanced diet. Who's right? I don't know. Be honest with you, I don't know. I'm no expert in this. I'm keeping it really simple. I'm keeping it really simple and I'm keeping it really honest. Eat less, move more. Eat less, move more. Now, with my weight as heavy as I am, it's very difficult for me to move more at my stage. Even now, 506 pounds, you know. I'm not going jogging with 506 pounds. It's just not going to happen. I, I'd hurt myself. I would do more damage. In fact, this past week, I did some walking, trying to get a little bit of exercise. And I did some exercises uh, in, in my living room, in my bedroom area. And I hurt my back. And so that actually set me back now, because my back's hurting. So that makes it more difficult to do stuff. And, and you know, more difficult, to, a simple thing like going to the bathroom, taking a shower, hurts, it hurts. So. You got to be very careful not to push too hard where you're pushing through and hurting yourself. And now, you know, I'm, I'm going to be set back for a couple of weeks waiting for my back to heal up or, or get recovered, you know. Or in the meantime, you know, you're you're filling yourself with this kind of poison, trying to to uh, to shelter that pain. And that's not good for you either. 
one of the reasons why I'm having uh, liver issues is because I used to take Tylenol. I, I blew out my back early on. I was bucked off of a, a horse and hurt my back many years ago. I uh, broke eight ribs on my left side and both collarbones and I was pretty beat up, so I started taking, you know, Tylenol by the handful. Uh, going to a chiropractor and getting my back worked on. Tylenol, Tylenol. I ate so much Tylenol, I about killed my kidney or my liver because of it. So now I got to be very careful. But it taught me a lesson, a hard, a hard learned lesson. Got to be careful. Can't, can't do that stuff. I now take some ibuprofen occasionally occasionally very rarely obviously often enough that i have it here on my desk available to me but right now it's on my desk available to me because like i said i just hurt my back again normally it'd be put up in a medicine cabinet out of reach so well anyhow kids i think i'm going to go ahead and, and and finish my dinner i'm not going to eat all this I, I'm going to finish this one pork chop and I'm going to eat my Brussels sprouts. Maybe I'll have half a baked potato. I don't know. Maybe. We'll see. When I get done eating, I'll put a clip in here so you guys can see that. But <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and finish my eating. I, I hope you'll follow along with me while I'm going through this journey. I do need all the, all the support I can get. I mean, frankly, anybody out there that... Uh, you know, if you want to be a naysayer and tell me how I'm doing everything wrong, don't bother. I, I don't need those comments on my channel. But if you want to say, hey, brother, we're with you and root me on and, and give me encouragement, by all means, I, I need all of that I can get. And I certainly welcome that. Um, but, you know, if you feel it's your job to, uh, to, to, you know, be my boss and tell me how to live my life, don't, don't even bother. I'm not interested. I don't, I, last thing I need to hear. So I already know what I need to do for me. I don't need anybody else telling me that. So anyhow, kids, I'm going to go ahead and end this here. Please do follow along, like, subscribe, share it with your friends if you want. I am currently at 506 pounds. My goal is 250. I do plan on trying to lose 100 pounds between now and the end of the year. That's a lot to lose in a short period of time. I don't think I'm going to make that. I think I'm going to fall short. But you know, better to aim high and fall short than not aim high at all. So that's what we're doing. So kids, be good, be careful, take good care of one another, and we'll have more for you here in the near future. Thanks for watching.